No one completely understands the human brain. In fact, scientists only understand 10% of its functions, while 90% remains a mystery. If scientists can map the human brain, they can help humans heal from brain degenerative diseases. But can they do it? Do they have the new technology to do it? Is there a way to actually map the human brain? In this particular video, we're going to see how artificial intelligence is going to be used to map the human brain. Hi, I am Olympia LaPointe, host of Answers Unleashed, seen on AnswersUnleashed.com. I am the author of the award-winning book series, Answers Unleashed. If you know anything about my background, you know that I helped launch 28 NASA space shuttle missions into space. And the same mathematics that I used to launch the rockets is the same mathematics used in artificial intelligence. And if you've been watching my videos recently, you know that I have been creating a series of artificial intelligence educational videos to help us understand the emerging technology. This particular video is helping us understand how researchers are mapping the human brain with artificial intelligence. Now, this particular subject is very fascinating for me. If you know my background, you know that I wrote my second book, Answers Unleashed, The Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power, and I talk about the power of the human brain and how our brain operates, as far as we know. I love finding out about artificial intelligence. So when I had the ability to look at how the brain operates with this new type of project that is coming out, as well as use my research background and artificial intelligence knowledge, I became inspired to create this particular video for you and I. This particular video helps us understand the new brain mapping project. It's gonna help us understand why it's being performed, how artificial intelligence is being used to create the brain map and the dangers as well as the benefits of the project. I hope you enjoy this particular video. I love creating science videos for both you and I because I love science and I hope that you enjoy it too. So let's start the lecture. This particular lecture is Brain Mapping with Artificial Intelligence. I am Professor Olympia LaPointe. The brain is a phenomenal, phenomenal organ, and it operates in such an amazing way. In this particular lecture, we're going to understand how artificial intelligence is going to attempt to model the amazing brain that we have. And we're going to see a couple of things in this lecture. We're going to understand the Human Connectome Project, HCP. And it's being led by the National Institutes of Health. And the Connectome Project is a major undertaking that will use artificial intelligence technology. The National Institutes of Health is a part of the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services in the United States Medical Research Agency designed for making important discoveries that improve health and save lives. And there's a organization that's working with it. Seattle's Allen Institute will spearhead a project to create an atlas of the cells in the human brain as part of a, a huge project. And the this huge project is being awarded to the Institute and its collaborators. And it's a five-year project that builds on the Allen Institute's previous endeavors of mapping the location, identity, and function of cells in the brain. In this particular lecture, we're going to look at three things. Why is brain mapping being performed? How are scientists mapping the brain with artificial intelligence? And what are the benefits and dangers of this work? I was so fascinated as I did this research and I'm sharing it with you today. Mapping has been happening for a long time. And let's take a look at that. We're gonna look at the science history of mapping so we understand why mapping is important and it's not just what the brain mapping has been happening with it's been happening with other areas and we're going to see that if we consider the periodic table it took a while for 
scientists to determine where items were, or elements were on the table to see how they would react. It took a while for researchers to develop a map of the globe. It took a while for scientists to understand that different locations have different type of um, areas and in, in mappings according to it. And then if we consider the DNA strand, it took years for scientists to understand where on the DNA strands were their mutations so they can identify how people uh, could look for certain type of ailments. The human brain is no different. We have the ability to be able to potentially map different areas of the brain. Like for example, this center part, the red part is the amygdala that uh, represents the fight, flight, or freeze response when people are scared. And that part of the brain operates with other parts of the brain if fear is activated in the same way that the fear activates, there's certain ways in which the brain can malfunction and it can heal itself depending on what's happening in the brain. And researchers are trying to figure out how that mechanism of healing works. Innovation happens in cycles. And if you have been watching my uh, first artificial intelligence uh, history of artificial intelligence lecture, you know that I first talked about there's different cycles of innovation. There's old, new, and newer. And there's certain time periods in which certain innovations really allow a new growth of technology. And these new technologies create new inno innovation and new approaches. So it's like a cycle. And this is like, a way in which society develops with new technology. Well, mapping has been around and every 50 years or so, there are new mapping opportunities and blueprints. For example, it's how atoms work, continents move, how the DNA has its structure, how roads are created, even how human cells operate. And we can consider that with the example of mapping from the periodic table, the map of the earth, the human genome, and GPS navigation. So let's look at that. If we look at this on a timeline, the periodic table took years to develop from 1789 to 1869. Like, for example, the French chemist Antoine Lavoisier created a first grouping of these materials and non-metals. And in 1869, there was a scientist who discovered the periodic table while attempting to organize the elements. And this happened in February of 1869. Mapping of the continents had a similar type of history and it's still being mapped out. For example, is the 1820 to 2023 was a map of the continents. And even in 2023, there was a new continent uh, found, and it was found through satellites. It was so fascinating. Uh, but in 1921 was the first map that actually showed continents with very little distortions. The human genome was a different type of mapping project that happened from 1998 to 2003, and it was the Human Genome Project. And it looked at 25,000 human genes to create a model. This is a mapping of the DNA strand. And then GPS was a different type of model. The GPS roads were being created from 1957 to 2023 using satellites. And this GPS was global positioning system. And it began in 1957 with the United States uh, forming a satellite navigation experiment. And it continues today with monitoring submarines carrying military missiles. So this process and timeline has been happening for a while. For continent mapping, human genome in the GPS, there's now another item that's added to the timeline. The brain mapping with artificial intelligence, and that's happening today. Brain mapping is a project to construct brain maps and analyze their atomical structures in neurological and cognitive science using magnetic resonance, MRI sensors, and machine learning and generative AI. So we're going to look at now the brain mapping with artificial intelligence. So this part here of brain mapping with artificial intelligence is what we're going to look at now. Why is brain mapping being performed? But before we can answer that question, we're gonna answer a 
series of smaller questions. And this will help us understand why understanding the brain and mapping the brain is of importance. Here's some basic answers to some basic questions. Why is brain, what is brain mapping? That's, that's, the, that's a good question. And one of the most promising areas of research in recent years has been AI brain mapping, which aims to understand the neural networks of the brain and how they work together to create our thoughts, emotions, and behaviors. And another question is, what is its intended use? Brain mapping is aimed to be an effective procedure for identifying brain dysregulation and other brain functioning abnormalities. A brain mapping is sought to develop new treatment that aims to successfully treat a variety of brain conditions and their symptoms. And if we think about the brain conditions, this is really encompassing because the brain conditions have, we have various brain conditions. Everyone's brains are different and everyone's brains operate differently. So when we think of what is the goal, the ultimate goal is to create a map resource that will enable better diagnosis and treatment of mental and neurological disorders and diseases that affect more than one fifth of America's population, costing the U.S. economy $1.5 trillion a year. Now, the global costs are higher, and these issues affect people across the world. It's not the United, just the United States. It's people across the world. If we can create a way to be able to model hu the human brain, we can help people across the world. A neuroscience brain map is what's needed. Chemistry has its own map. Uh, the gene has its own map. Neuroscience needs a similar type of map that models the structures of the brain. What are some mental health issues for mapping? That's a basic question that can be answered. Attention deficit disorder, ADD, autism, Asperger's, depression, stress disorders, generalized anxiety disorders, PTSD, insomnia, panic attacks, substance abuse are just a couple of things that require mapping. If we can understand how these particular health issues come up in the human brain, there can be possibly ways for new ways of treatment. There's medical brain issues for mapping. And this list comes from the Cleveland um, Clinic. And this is just fascinating. It talks about um, Alzheimer's. It talks about a frontal temporal dementia. It talks about a multiple sclerosis, a Parkinson's disease. These are all type of brain degenerative issues that's medical issues in which scientists are trying to find a way to reverse if possible. So what makes the process important of this mapping? The human brain is constructed of multiple networks of interconnected neurons. These networks are responsible for organization, time management, memory, mood, emotional regulation, language processing, attention, understanding nonverbal social cues, and more. Ideally, these networks have strong connections with each other that help the brain function well. When there is a communication breakdown between these networks, the patient may start to experience reduced cognitive functioning, emotional dysregulation, and other debilitating symptoms. Brain mapping investigates each of these networks to determine any misfires or, mis or, or dysregulation. So as we understood those basic type of questions and answers, now let's look at how are scientists mapping the brain with artificial intelligence specifically. Scientists are working with companies and new AI to map the brain. Uh, you have been seeing me on the news talk about generative AI. That's a new type of artificial intelligence that's out that looks at different images and looks at patterns within these images to understand uh, what is happening to create new type of, of content, new type of understanding and patterns of complex information. That type of information and approach is being used by scientists. Artificial intelligence brain mapping is the use of artificial intelligence algorithms to analyze brain scans and other data to identify patterns and connections within the brain. This approach has the potential to unlock new insights into how the brain works and could lead to breakthroughs in diagnosis and treatment of neurological and 
psychiatric disorders. And this, this is really cool. And I want to show this to us. This is an artistic artwork of how the human brain is constructed. The human brain is constructed of multiple networks of interconnected neurons. These neuron networks are responsible for organization and time management, memory, mood, emotional regulation, language processing, attention, understanding nonverbal social cues and more like we talked about before. And this is fascinating as, as I point this out, this is like a dendrite. This is like, you see this right here? This is like the dendrite and these like branches here, these are dendrites. And this is like a neuron, this like ball, this is like a cell. And the synapses is how the energy fires from one location to one cell from another cell, and it transfers through uh, energy. And this is light. And I, I I break this down in my second book of the neuroscience of the brain. I break this down in my second book of the neuroscience of the brain by calling out different uh, neuroscientist research, as well as looking at the brain not as a as a neuroscientist would, but look at it as a physicist would, looking at how information goes from one part of the brain to another using the form of light, which is quantum communication within the brain. And that's that's my particular work of how I look at the brain with physics and mathematics. So the synapses, I look at it as light, information from light being transferred from one place to the brain to the next place of the brain. And that's how I look at it as a mathematician. The brain contains billions of neurons, each with its own unique connections and patterns of activity, and more of the dendrites exist. These, these dendrites house information between the neurons, and it's really powerful. Each dendrite houses more information than, than the entire World Wide Web, and we have more dendrites than neurons. A human has approximately 100 billion neurons in the mature human brain, and there are seven quintillion dendrites, and these are the neural connections. So these branch-like structures, one branch-like structure alone can house as much information as the World Wide Web, and we have this many quintillion dendrites in the brain. And we also have a hundred billion neurons in the brain. So there's so much information in the brain. Can it be housed? So that brings us to the next question is what are scientists trying to find when they analyze this? At the heart of the AI brain mapping is the concept of connectome. The Human Connectome Project, HCP, plans to do for the brain what the Human Genome Project did for genetics. The connectome refers to the intricate networks of the connections between the neurons in the brain. By mapping the connectome, researchers hope to gain a better, under, better deeper understanding of how the different areas of the brain communicate with one another and work together to create complex thoughts and behaviors. And this is an image, this is a side view of the brain's left hemisphere, including the cerebrum and, and cerebrum. And so this is like, this is a side view. This is a snapshot that looks at the fibers of the brain's left hemisphere. And it's just absolutely amazing. I just look at this and I'm just in awe just in awe. And this particular image comes from the Human Connectome Project. A map and baseline to a healthy brain is what's being sought. Charting the human connectome in healthy children and adults will help researchers discover the role that the brain circuitry plays during development and aging, as well as inform our understanding of numerous brain disorders, cognitive decline, and mental illnesses. And this image it's a large red circular bundle it is a part of the corpus callosum. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, but if not, I'll find out how to do it, which connects the left and right hemispheres. And this is just, this is just absolutely amazing. And I talk about this in my book where we have the connections in our brain that houses the ability to find answers. It's not just the left side of the brain or the right side of the brain, is it, but it's also the connections. And so that's what I talk about in my book. And in this particular project, this Connectome project is literally looking at what I first theorized in my book. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit. Machine learning and generative 
generative AI is going to be used with this particular project. And let me break that down for us so we can see what it looks like. If you saw one of my earlier lectures where I talked about the civil rights and understanding how AI has a feedback loop and how not all AI works op works correctly or operates correctly based on four different areas, data design use in the real world, we can apply that particular concept to understanding the machine learning on how that's being applied with generative AI to these particular data sets. First is looking at the data itself. The project I can understand is looking at the images that exist from brain scans. And these images from brain scans are going to be, be used as the data that's going to feed into the machine learning and the generative AI to help people understand what the intricacies are within the human brain. And this data is going to be understood and hopefully modeled correctly. And that brings us to the second point. There is going to be a need to create an accurate artificial intelligence algorithm that can predict and understand how the connections of the brain are operating and how they're firing with the synapses and how the information from the dendrites to the neurons are being connected and housing information and what parts of the brain are giving information at what time. If the scientists and mathematicians and researchers can find the mathematical algorithm, the mathematical model to determine how the brain works, then they will apply it to the use. Then this algorithm is going to be applied to understanding a real life scan to see if there is an ability to predict what's going to happen next based on the type of data and the type of algorithm that was defined. And then if this works correctly, and if the model, the mathematical model actually works to predict something that is existing on a scan, then it would be applied to the real world within type of MRI imaging. So again, if we backtrack, first the data has to be captured from real life people and that data be analyzed. Then there has to be an artificial intelligence algorithm that's created that's going to be accurate to be able to model and predict what is going to happen in certain areas of the brain. And based on all that data, if it's correct, only if it's correct, then it can be applied to the real world to understand more human brains. And then that data is collected again. Now, machine learning is applied to fMRIs. Now, let's break down what this is. While an MRI scan allows doctors to examine a patient's organs, tissues, or bones, an fMRI looks at the function of the brain. Functional magnetic resonance imaging, fMRI, are pictures that hold hidden patterns. Researchers have begun, un, u, began using machine learning algorithms, which is a type of mathematics, to analyze and gain insight from brain, brain data and these scans. These insights serve to identify patterns and relationships which would otherwise have remained hidden. And these insights can help us understand internal cognitive functions, memory, and decision-making. There's other type of brain scans too. This is called an EEG scan. This is an electro in, I hope I'm pronouncing this correctly. And if I don't, if I botch it, well, I botch it and I'll have to just do this again. An electro, it may, I'll just call it an EEG, <laughs> may be able to identify patterns. So ICU patients will, with severe traumatic brain injuries who have a level of consciousness not revealed by standard bedside neurological examination can be detected. So let me, let me break this down again. There's other types of EEG scans, more than MRI scans. These scans, EEG, may be used to identify patterns in the brain, especially in ICU patients who have experienced a severe traumatic brain injury where the doctors and the nurses may not be able to identify it quickly by regular bedside neurological examinations. And there could be a, an ability to be able to use these type of scans with artificial intelligence imaging with the generative AI. 
there's also type of SPEC scans. SPEC stands for Single Photon Emission Computed Tomography. This generates a special three-dimensional image used on where gamma rays are being recorded over time. And this is just amazing. These images can conform whether confirm whether you have had or sustained brain dysfunction after an injury. Unfortunately, it's often it, it can't be uh, used in some cases, but it can be used in others. So this is a type of imaging that's used for the brain. What will be their difficulties? And this is this is really fascinating. The brain contains so many neurons. And each person has a unique connection of this pattern of, of activity. And there's more dendrites that house information between neurons. And there's so many dendrites that there's going to be a challenge in making sure that this particular artificial intelligence model is going to model what happens in the brain accurately. And there's going to be another difficulty, housing the data that's being found in all of this. To house all the data and make sense of all this data, researchers will need a powerful AI algorithm and servers to identify meaningful patterns and connections. The process is similar to mapping stars in space. The information found from dendrites and neurons to achieve this vision, one clearly needs to develop really high power technologies. And as we are looking here on this screen, this is an example of, of a server where all this information is held. Additional difficulties will be creating the map. Mapping of the brain is like mapping solar systems in space. To date, it has not been possible to reconstruct the full activity patterns of a single region of the brain. While imaging technologies like fMRI or, or the other uh, types with this uh, MEG can capture whole brain activity patterns, these techniques lack single cell specificity and, re and require deep resolution to understand how these neurons fire. So this information has to be recorded in complete circuits like the beginning to the end and understanding the chain of events of how it manifests within a dendrite and how the the brain fires based on information. It's going to have to have a start and completion in order to look at the movement of how energy fo focuses itself and transfers itself from one area to the brain to the next. And each person's brain's are different. And this is something that I figured out, and you're going to get this here nowhere else. Every person's brain continuously reshapes itself through neuroplasticity. And every brain is 100% different. No two brains are alike. One of the key challenges of AI brain mapping is the sheer complexity of the human brain itself. And it's still a mystery how the brain reshapes itself based on human interactions and observations. And Albert Einstein called these interactions quantum entanglement. So basically, uh, Albert Einstein called this spooky entanglement. And that's why I put that particular video, uh, particular image there, because it's still a mystery how people's brains reshape based on what they experience and what they observe and why two people's brains will be different. For example, you can have two twins that have the exact same DNA, but because of the fact that one twin has experienced one set of circumstances and the other twin experiences something else, you'll have completely different DNA patterns within the cells of the twins, even though they were born with the same DNA pattern, this same type of philosophy applies to the human brain. Even though twins can be born and go to the same place, their brains operate differently because of what they experience on earth in different locations. I talk about this specifically in my third book, Answers Unleashed 2, The Science of Attracting What You Want. I talk about how Brains make decisions, and I present a mathematical model called quantum deciding that shows how brains reshape based on how they interact with people in different types of situations. And that mathematical model is called quantum deciding, where people's brains reshape based on their decision making from certain experiences and observations. And in 2017, a rocket scientist proposed a theory, an AI brain model. And that was me. <laughs> I share the mathematical functions to predict how the brain reshapes itself through experiences. 
And I wrote the STEM book, Answers Unleash the Science of Unleashing Your Brain's Power, explaining a theory of how the brain has energy released from three parts, the brain's less left hemisphere, the brain's right hemisphere, and the center, which consists of all brain connections. Together, this unit forms a three-sided brain, which I call a TRIA brain. I propose this as a physics and mathematical model to predict how the brain reshapes itself and rewires itself. I'm not a neuroscientist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not a, um, a person with a medical degree. I am a person with a mathematics degree. So as a result, I looked at the brain with a mathematical lens and physics lens to understand how the brain reshapes with uh, energy, mass, and light. Einstein's uh, theory of relativity to understand a potential model that could be used within artificial intelligence brain models. What are the benefits and dangers of this work? And I know, I know you've been thinking this as you've been watching this video. I know that you've been thinking, I wonder if this is a good thing. Well, it's a great thing and it can be a potentially dangerous thing and it's all depending on how it's used. And I'm a real, real proponent of making sure that when we have innovation, we understand the benefits as well as the risks so we can identify the risk in advance and mitigate them in advance through uh, thinking about the future. What are the benefits? The Allen Institute can build on the temporary forms and, and mapping that they already have. The Allen Institute can build on the primary mapping project. Four additional related projects will allow scientists to do the following. Map the mouse brain through its development. If any of you are familiar with science, there's a lot of tests done on the human brain and the mouse's brain because the mouse has a similar neurological structure to humans. And so that's why the little poor mice are tested in labs, unfortunately. And it's because that the mouse has a similar type of neurological structure. So the map of the mouse brain through its development is something that it can be mapped also with this particular genome project. I'm sorry, this particular connectome project. The link the brain cells uh, is another opportunity. You can link brain cell type with function in regions of the mouse brain that process visual information. And scientists will capture the activity of neurons as animals perceive their visual environment and react to it. So that's another se separate type of output from this work. And another benefit is that you can create a public web-based knowledge platform to showcase the discoveries. And the fourth is you can build an outreach and coordination center with brain mapping research. So this is the benefits of this particular type of research of the Connectome project, where you can start to understand how different, different nervous systems are going to operate based on, on these prediction models. And the benefits also include more aspects. The new endeavor will extend much analysis to the entire brain of humans and, and other uh, creatures. The output would include a cell type reference set with standardized names, a spatial, spatial map of, of sections of the brain with cell types and pen to them, and a way to integrate the information in three dimensions across data sets, which is amazing. And the project is aimed at understanding what common people share using data from just a few inter in just a few individuals. So these are the dangers, and I know you were waiting for this. And this is, I thought out of the box. I, I, can, I can see the future many, many times. And so I asked what could more than likely happen in the future? And this is what you're gonna get from this video and nowhere else. This is what I saw as potential issues with this particular technology. So there's warnings to this. The dangers that I foresaw that humanity has the ability to mitigate so this doesn't happen, I'm going to share here. There is a there are concerns that the that the information could be used in harmful ways if the information is in the wrong hands. So if you look at three to four different risks, I've identified them. 
You can have the wrong sample brain population. You can have the wrong artificial intelligence used. You can have the wrong agencies using the bioinformation. And you could have the wrong technology using it. And so we're going to look at this specifically. One of the dangers is that you can create wrong information by having the wrong people to start with. If there's not a correct set of humans selected for this particular project that will represent the total population of human brains, you may alter the brain mapping results. If you do not create a way to be able to get a diverse population of people from different areas and different experiences and different backgrounds, and if you don't map the experiences from a diverse group, meaning different people from different cultures, different sexes, uh, different experiences, uh, different type of DNA structures, if you don't have the uh, an accurate sample of your population that you're going to model it from, your model be, will be wrong. So to avoid this risk, it is important to select people with diversity inclusion in the sample test data. And scientists are going to really have to strategically collect different groups of people in order for this project to successfully work. There could be wrong generative artificial intelligence algorithm used on brain scans. And this comes from something called AI hallucinations. There are some cases in which AI, generative AI, generative artificial intelligence will not have all the information. So it will create illogical information to prove a point and the information is not accurate. And it's called AI hallucinations. If there is not enough inputted, input data that is accurate from the firing between neuron cells to um, dendrites to, to synapses, and if there's not the accurate information, the artificial intelligence could create a wrong assumption within its argument, and as a result, it could create an error in its outcome. That error would fail to accurately make conclusions about the brain. To avoid this risk, AI results, whatever they come out to be, they're going to have to be regularly verified and vetted with non-AI instruments. You will have to be able to find a way to verify the information that the artificial intelligence is generating to ensure that the artificial intelligence isn't making up its own logic and own rules that is not accurate to how the human brain works. So I'm, I'm speaking to some scientists that's watching this, and I have a feeling that when you watch this, you're going to know what I'm talking about, and you're going to get an inspiration on this video. You have to 100% check your results, because if you don't, the artificial intelligence may make assumptions that will completely throw off your results. And if you do not check your AI results with non-AI measurementation, measurement instruments, you will be operating to a false algorithm that could potentially wreak havoc in people's brains. So this is extremely critical that the artificial intelligence is vetted for accuracy. Where are also the dangers? Bio-welfare. There's bio-welfare agencies that, that are secret that we don't know about that could take this information and create biological pathogens that introduce brain diseases. Nations across the world can set laws on how this information can be used. Uh, just like there's nuclear agencies to ensure that nuclear uh, waste and nuclear contamination and a nuclear type of usage happens in a certain way where, where people stay safe, I predict that nations across the world will have to find a way to set laws on how the particular information about how the brain is going to be used. And this is the last type of danger in which I see. Robots can be trained with brain connective patterns. 
with large language models. And robotics can be programmed to think like humans without considering human safety and human concerns. There needs to be humans overseeing how this data is used and applied to develop humanity. And there has to be humans to determine how there can be mitigations of how when certain artificial intelligence can be programmed into robotics where it doesn't risk human lives. Mm. I don't know who this, this message is for, but you have to make sure humans are overseeing how any of this information is being programmed into robots and robotics. And you have to create uh, humanitarian shutoff switches on different type of robotics so it doesn't continue connecting in a way that could be destructive to how humans operate. The benefits are the focus in this connect on project. There are dangers and there are great benefits. If we find ways to create mitigations, these are ways in which can prevent something bad from happening. If we plan for that and create ways to stop bad things from happening before they do, we can implement ways to reduce future risk and have safe technology. I hope you have enjoyed this lecture of brain mapping with artificial intelligence. I hope you have enjoyed this particular video with artificial intelligence and brain mapping. This video is to help people understand how artificial intelligence is mapping the brain and it's helping people understand the way that artificial intelligence can be safe and used for the future. If you remember what you have learned in this particular video of number one, why it's important to map the brain. Number two, understanding how artificial intelligence is used in mapping the brain. And three, understanding the risks and the benefits. You can create innovation and create ways to keep humanity safe. I hope this video has been helpful for you. For more information, visit my website, answersunleashed.com slash technology safety and answersunleashed.com slash SMC to look at more videos on artificial intelligence. I am so happy that you have enjoyed this video. Share this video with other people and I'll see you next time.